the Arizona Cardinals went a direction that, you know, right before the draft, we had kind of gotten word that they were going to go this direction. But it still, to me, is a weird one because they took somebody who is kind of a hybrid player at the linebacker position, which is exactly what they did last year and exactly what they had done a couple years prior with with Hassan Reddick. And is it going to work out, Tony? That's all I need to know. Yeah, I... I think it's. I think it was a great pick, and it was. A, it was a pick that you know, if you watched, if you've been paying attention to Pro Football Network, we had yep. said more than a week in advance. This is the direction that they were looking. I, I don't agree that he's a hybrid type of uh, player. I, I think he's a guy that is a true three-four outside type of linebacker. I've said time and time again about Javon Collins. He is the type of guy that 25 years ago. When the six foot four, six foot five, two hundred and fifty five pound outside linebacker who could rush the passer was the priority in the draft, he's a top eight pick. But now they like these pint sized linebackers, these safety yep. sized linebackers who are two hundred twenty pounds, and Collins doesn't fit that mold. Uh, I've also said time and time again that I think two or three years down the road, people are going to wonder how this guy fell out of the top ten because he has got it all. I, and he's a terrific run defender. He can rush the passer. He can also play in coverage. He's solid when the ball's in the air. A lot of people remember yeah. that uh, interception in, in overtime against Tulane, which uh, he ran back for the game-winning touchdown in overtime. If you've ever talked to him, and I got to interview him for half an hour, he's a smart, instinctive guy, pre-med major at uh, Tulsa. He's got it going on. You know, he, he speaks his mind, but he doesn't do it in the sense that he thinks he's better than everyone else. He knows where he's coming from. He knows where he came from. I think when you look at the fact that Chandler Jones, I believe, has got one year left on his deal. You look at Marcus Golden, who has given him a marginal contract. I thought this was a great fit with an outstanding player. As uh, it was a situation with their second round pick, Rondell Moore. I mean, I think that's the guy that is a perfect fit for the Cliff Kingsbury yeah. uh, offense. I think Kyler Murray is going to have a field day as Rondell Moore can run receiver screens. He's outstanding running after the catch. He, he's a guy who can streak down the sidelines and, and, and beat uh, defenders, defensive backs in a foot race for the long ball. He's an outstanding return specialist. A lot of people may remember as a freshman where he, when he almost single-handedly beat Ohio State on the Saturday night. I, I thought both of these selections were outstanding uh, choices by the uh, Cardinals, and I think they're going to have uh, immediate uh, success uh, with these guys. After that, it kind of fell off for me. Marcus Wilson in the fourth round, more of a workout warrior than a good football player, although not to his fault because Florida kind of lined him up in a, as a hybrid safety cornerback facing the action. They really didn't ask him to do that much. If you can develop Mar Marcus Wilson, you got you got something there. Victor Dumakeji of Duke, a smaller edge rusher who's not real big, not real fast. He gives a lot of effort, more of a special teams guy. Tay Gowan, good story, didn't play last year, opted out, uh, got COVID over the summer. Then he gave COVID to his, uh, his, actually mom got COVID from him. His mom got very sick, he shut it down. Showed flashes in 2019. Gonna be an uphill battle for him to make a roster. James Wiggins, who when he's healthy and on the field, he's a real good player, but he struggled staying healthy the past two years. I thought Michael Minette in the last round was an excellent pick. Uh, Minette, Minette should have been a middle round choice, but he's got some knee injuries. They traded for Rodney Hudson in the offseason. Rodney Hudson's over 30 years old. you got Brian Winters there at guard. I, I think Minette's a guy who will be number two on the depth chart for a year or two and could eventually develop into a starter. And do you think uh, any of their undrafted free agent signings have a, a chance to make the roster? I mean, Lorenzo Burns is a, is a physical uh, uh, corner who doesn't have great speed. Carrie Angeline. Yeah, he's an interesting signing. I don't know how he fits the Cliff Kingsbury uh, system, but if you are if you want a third tight end who's primarily a blocker and could be a short-range passer, maybe he's a guy that can make uh, a roster. Uh, they were underwhelming uh, with their undrafted, with their, with their UDFA signings, but their first two picks, I think they hit it out of the park. Mm -hmm.